You would have seen images of, of Milos motivating the boys before the game. You've made a habit of that, Milos, now, <laughs> haven't you? I have, I have. <laughs> it works, it works. Um, gets the job done, help the boys. But I think Arnie does most of the talking and if there's anything to be said, it's just a little bit, you know, to fire the boys up, to to get going and to know why we're here. And obviously to get the job done if we can. And I think we've done quite well in the last two games, especially, you know, to to keep two clean sheets at a World Cup is is something phenomenal. And, you know, to get out of a group like this with six points, I think, I think no one believed in us apart from us and the people around us. So it's it's phenomenal. I think it's a historic achievement, but it's not something where, you know, we want to stop at it's I think it's a stepping stone for, for the future and you know we wanna we wanna continue to build on this. Benz. Milos Benz from Channel Ten. We've just heard the horrible news about uh, Bailey. What a performance from him to, to play under those circumstances and I presume the team will be rallying right around him. Yeah, so first of all my condolences go out to, to his his family and his wife's family. I think it's um a especially for his wife with with two kids it's something that no one wants to wish upon anyone and i think it's a very hard moment for her and 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 for him as well and he knows that we are his second family we're going to be behind him and if there's anything that any of us can do or, or the federation can do at this moment i know that football australia will do and we as a, as a team as as a brotherhood are going to do the same if, if any of us can help we will and you know we're all behind him and it's just uh, just shows you that what we as footballers go through sometimes, and what we put our families through as well, is is not a it's not just a couple of training sessions a week and ninety minute game where forty thousand come and watch you and you get paid big dollars and everyone, you know, you don't care how you play. So it's a lot more emotions, a lot more things are involved in football than just you know playing. Milos Vincergari from the Sydney Morning Herald. Congratulations to you and the team on a fantastic night. Um, looking ahead, it's Argentina. Um, we've asked you guys questions in the last week about the individual players on the other, on the opposition team, and, and you've been keen to to talk about yourselves. I'd imagine Leo Messi is maybe the one exception to that. Um, it's it's a privilege to line up against him, but is it also a privilege to have the opportunity to 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 try and knock Messi and Argentina out of this World Cup? Um, obviously, now that we know we're playing against Argentina, it's going to be. Uh a difficult game, obviously playing against probably the best football ever to, to grace the game. And, you know, apart from that, again, as I say, it's 11 against 11. It's not, there's not 11 messes, there's one. And obviously we know their squad is full of, full of stars, you know, even Dybala's on the bench and, and Martinez comes off the bench. So it, it's a squad that's, that's immaculate. And, you know, I, I always, Loved Messi, and I think he's the greatest to ever play the game. And I think it's not—it's not an honor to to play against him, because he's just a human, as we all are. It's just a—it's an honor to be in the round of 16 of a World Cup. That's the honor in itself. Um, whether we played Argentina or we would have played against Poland, it still would have been an honor to represent Australia in the round of 16 of a World Cup. Um, the way that the defense has been playing. Um you guys will be very, very confident going into this ride, especially with Harry Sutar, Kai Rolls, everyone in the form that they're in at the moment, messy or not, um, you guys will back yourselves in. Uh, you have to believe, you know, we have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe in in all the boys, whether it's Kai, Harry, whether it's Aziz, Nate, Fran, Bailey, Thomas, Dang, myself, whoever it is that's playing at the back. We have to believe and we have to be confident in our abilities to, to stop every attack. Um, you know, whether that's going to be possible or not, I'm not sure, but I know that we're going to give 110% to stop everything that goes towards Matty's goal. And believe me, there's there's going to be a lot of preparations today and tomorrow before that game, which, again, is a very short turnaround um, before the next game. And it's something that FIFA need to consider, that we're not robots, that we are humans and that we do need to recover and that we can't, you know, we can't just play day after day. You know, we need a, we need a break as well. And... <clears throat> not just me, I think the boys, um, especially the boys that played three in a row, you know, and they have a short turnaround now again, but, you know, they'll recover, they'll get back and, and they'll be ready. But in terms of defence, I think, 
the boys have put in two unbelievable shifts over the last two games, and it's been it's been phenomenal, I think, and I hope it continues like that. And Milos Stovibash here from SBS. Um, congratulations on the win. What what does it mean to you? I know your your story is well known in Australian football, but personally, what does it mean to you to start a World Cup match, perform the way you did, emotionally and and practically, what what you gave to the, to the team? Um, yeah, I, I think it's. Yeah, I did my my bit, if I can say that. You know, I, I did the, the the job as best as I could, and and I think you know I I died on the pitch in in terms of in football ways of dying on the pitch and giving my heart and leaving it on 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 the pitch. Um, I'll always continue to do my best that I can to represent Australia. I've said it a million times. You know, I, I obviously can't give Australia back enough for what they've given to me and my family, but. I can leave my heart and soul out on the pitch for these boys and, and to try and keep people happy in the country, which I think we've been able to do for the last couple of weeks. Um, we'd love to continue it. Uh, in terms of me and my story, you know, I've made a post after the, the game we beat Tunisia and some people have taken that post one way or another and, you know, I, I said it there, it's not a political or, or a war statement or anything, you know. I, I'm not a fan of any war. I'm not a fan of anyone losing their home, losing anything they've ever had. Um, for me, it was just a more an emotional moment, being a child and thinking that, you know, you could basically come from nothing and 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 win a game in a World Cup and win two games in a World Cup and get to the round of 16. And for me, that's the most important is to pass on a message to to the younger generations and to kids around the world who, who maybe have nothing or who have little in their lives that. You know, dreams are for all of us. You know, God gave us all the imagination when we sleep to dream, and you can dream of anything. You know, I can go to bed tonight and dream of winning a World Cup, and who's to say that in 15 days, 17 days, whenever it is, that that dream won't become an, uh, a real achievement? You know, and that's why I think God obviously has the best powers in the world, and that's why He's given us an imagination. And for me, I just want to say to the younger generation just keep dreaming, keep believing, and Anything's possible, really. Anything's possible with a bit of luck, a bit of determination, and just just head down and work hard. Whether it's football, rugby, whether it's wanting to be a journalist, whether it's wanting to be a writer or an actor, I think that's the most important thing is just to believe. Uh, Milos, Joey Lynch, hi, Joey Lynch from uh, ESPN. In the aftermath of the France game, Arnie was quick to recast that as a friendly and a learning experience. Coming up against another high-powered, world-class attack in Argentina, do you think the lessons you've taken from that game will help you go up against the Argentinians? Yeah, I think it will. Um, obviously, this one's this one can't be classified as a friendly. Um, I think it will. Obviously, you know, playing against France, who's probably, I think, not in just my eyes, in everyone's eyes, probably the, the favourites at the World Cup at the moment with the players they have. But I think Argentina, after their first loss. They've just turned up another level and just decided to, to, I guess, play to the best of their abilities and, and to come into every game with a determination to win. I think they're obviously driven by the motivation that it could be Messi's last World Cup and he wants to, to win the World Cup and end it on a high. Um, for us, it's to stop that. Unfortunately, I'm, I am a big fan of his, but you know, I'd love to win the World Cup probably more than, more than him to win the World Cup. But... Um, now, all jokes aside, I think we, we've learned a lot from the France game. And, you know, I think we showed them a bit, bit of respect in that first game. And I think uh, this game in two days' time will be uh, a completely different game. Um, we've obviously got time to prepare, which we will. But, again, it's two completely different styles of football. Um, France play one way, Argentina will play a different way. So I think it's just completely two different styles of football. And you can't really just take all that from one game and move into another game, but you can take some positives out of that and move into this game against Argentina. But France don't have that one guy that we all know who Argentina have. So he's capable of everything. And we also heard from you that in the past, you maybe haven't enjoyed wins, like you didn't enjoy mm -hmm. Red Star beating Liverpool. I'm guessing that hasn't been the case for the past two games? It, <coughs> it's, a, it's a matter of enjoying it. Yes, I'm very proud. I'm very happy. Believe me. I mean, not just me. I think we all are. I think you guys are proud of us as well. Um, whoever's Australian, I guess, is proud of us. But I think it's the moment once you finish 
And once you go home and you see your wife, your kids, your friends, your family, that's the moment it kind of sinks in and you realize what you did and how you won. But I always tell my wife, you know, I always enjoy things a month, a year, half a year later. I don't enjoy them at the moment. And she goes, that I'm an idiot, that I should enjoy things at the moment when I'm given them, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm happy, but I haven't been able to enjoy it, I guess. Hey, Vilash, congratulations, Clint here from Nine. Um, from the PM down to the tens of thousands that were crammed into pubs, clubs, Federation Square last night, the reaction's been extraordinary. How infectious is that for you as players, first of all? And are you seriously sitting here saying, why not us right now? It is infectious because I think um, I saw after the game um, the video of Federation Square and I think, if I'm not wrong, you guys can correct me that a lot of the, the states have come out and said there's going to be points throughout the country where people can, can come in and, and watch the game, which is going to be fantastic. And just imagine, you know, imagine in every state there's 10, 20, 30,000 people watching a game and we beat Argentina. I mean, just think about how infectious that is, not for us, but for kids that are five, six years old and wanting to start playing football. And that's just going to be a, like, a, like a nice dose of adrenaline for them to just want to inspire them and to kick on and, and to become the next Matty Ryan, Aaron Moy, Lecky, Rieranak, Cahill, Kyo, Viduka, whoever. And that's for me what drives me. That's what I would like to see. Um, am I saying why not us? I am. You know, Leicester City won the Premier League. I said this last night. Leicester City won the Premier League. Croatia got to the World Cup Finals, last World Cup. There has to always be that one story that kind of shocks the whole world, that one story that everyone jumps on the bandwagon and goes, oh, we know our country's out, let's support these guys because they're the underdogs. And I think it would be a lovely story, you know, one day when we reflect on it and we couldn't even write a book about it that we ended up getting to a World Cup final and winning it. I think that would be the most beautiful story in the world and hopefully then the the MP would give the people a, a public holiday, I guess. Uh, Milo Ryan Hiscox from Stats Perform. Um, talking to a lot of fans after the game last night, they said last night was sweeter than 2006 because there were massive expectations on that team, but not so much this team. Um, yeah, how does it feel to be compared in the same breath as you know that golden generation? I mean, it's a pleasure to be compared to them. They obviously that that generation had players playing in the best leagues around the world. Um, this generation doesn't have that, but I think this generation has a group of brothers who are willing to die one another. So that's the most important thing and that's what gets you over the line. And, you know, I don't want to be compared to no one. Um, I'm a single person. Each, of, each one of us is where ourselves, you know, and this group can't be compared to no one. This group is special for itself and I think this group is... Results-wise, I think we've surpassed that generation where we've got two wins and two clean sheets. But again, I can't compare a Harry Kuehl and a Tim Cahill to anyone in our group because I think they're the gods of Australian football. But this group here in itself, this 26-man squad and all the other boys that were part of the qualifiers, we are gods in our own way, I guess. Uh, off you go, Tom, quickly. Just, just, just I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I've got, I've got to get someone else. Oh, he's got someone. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry? I couldn't. I think you don't believe nothing straight away, but it takes. It takes you to realize, you know, after a certain amount of time that he's right and you have to buy into what he's doing. If you don't buy into it, you're not part of the squad. And I think all these boys bought into that. And I think Arnie's got that mentality that's been passed on to us is that, you know, you've you got to visualize it, you've got to dream it, you've got to speak it, believe it, and it happens. And I think it's, it's a prime example of when you really, really want something, which he's really wanted from day one since his first training session we had in Turkey, he said he wants to be the coach of the greatest soccer roost team ever. And I think that in itself is massive. And I think Arnie's proven that he's one of the greatest coaches that Australia's ever had. And I think this generation's proven that, you know, it could be the greatest generation ever. Now, that's not for me to determine. 
it's more or less for you guys or for coaches or for whoever. But I think we've all bought into Arnie's saying and I think, you know, I'd love for us to get past Argentina and then I could come back here next, say, Sunday, Monday and be like, well, I'm, I guess we are the greatest generation the soccer has ever had. But we'll have to wait and see, I guess. 12 o'clock Saturday night might be smiling and talking to you guys in the press conference room and saying, oh, we are the greatest. So we'll see. We'll give it a couple of days.